Welcome to Step by Step, a video Bible study series presented by the Monte Vista Church of Christ in Phoenix, Arizona. One of the topics that I often get questions from people about as a preacher is questions about the topic of demons. People want to know about demons. They want to know what are demons? Are demons real? Do demons still possess people today? People often have a lot of questions about demons. And so in this video, I want to talk with you about demons. I want to share with you some important information that the Bible reveals about demons. And the first bit of information that I want to share with you is according to the scriptures, according to God's book, the Bible, demons are real. Demons are real spiritual beings. In fact, not only are they real, but in the Bible, we can read about them possessing people. We can read about this taking place all throughout the New Testament. Matthew chapter 4. In Matthew chapter 4, we read about this in the time of Jesus. Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 24. The Bible says the news about him, the news about Jesus spread throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all those who were ill, those suffering with various diseases and pains and demonics, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. Large crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Notice here how in verse number 24, the writer Matthew mentions demonics. Demonics. What are demonics? Were demonics were people who at this time in the first century were, pres were possessed with demons. They had demons inside their bodies and Jesus cast out the demons uh, among things like giving sight to the blind and healing lepers and giving people the ability to walk for the first time. Jesus also performed the miracle of casting demons out of people. In fact, not only does he do that here in Matthew chapter 4, but we can read about him also doing that in Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 7, Matthew 17, Luke chapter 11. He does this over and over again throughout his three-year ministry. Not only does he do it, but so does his apostles. We can read about the apostle Paul casting demons out of people in Acts chapter 16 and in Acts chapter 19. In the first century, demons were possessing people. Demons are real and they possess those, a lot of people in the time of, in the time of Jesus. In fact, that brings us to a second point that we need to make about demons. And that is, according to the scripture, demons are workers of Satan. They're not workers of God. They're workers of Satan. That's why they're called evil spirits throughout the New Testament. That's why they're called unclean spirits. That's why they're called demons. They're called demons because they're demonic. They're workers of Satan. They abused and tormented those who whom they possessed. Demons are workers of Satan. They possessed and abused people, but their work of possess possession seems to have been something that solely took place in, in the first century. And that's the third thing that we need to understand. Demon possession seems to have solely taking place in the first century. In other words, when we read our Old Testament, when we read Genesis to Malachi, we don't find any legitimate real cases of demon possession. This seems to have been something that began in the time of the first century, particularly in the time of Jesus. And it probably occurred in the time of Jesus because it gave Jesus, it provided him with an avenue to demonstrate or confirm his identity. It gave him an avenue to demonstrate that he was truly the Messiah and the Son of God because he possessed authority and power over demons or the, or the workers of Satan. Look at Matthew, the 12th chapter. 
Matthew chapter 12, beginning with verse number 22. Matthew 12 and verse 22 says, Then a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute was brought to Jesus, and he healed him so that the mute man spoke and saw. All the crowds were amazed and were saying, This man cannot be the son of David, can he? But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man cast out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, Jesus said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided against itself will not stand. If Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I, by Beelzebub, cast out demons, by whom do your sons cast them out? For this reason, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can anyone enter the strong man's house and carry off his property unless he first binds the strong man, and then he will plunder his house? couple of important observations to make from this text. First, notice how, like we said a couple of minutes ago, Jesus possessed the power and the ability to cast out demons. He was legitimately doing this in the first century. We know this because not even his enemies could deny this. While many of the Pharisees could not stand Jesus, and they would be some of the lead guys who would orchestrate his death, They could not deny his ability to cast out demons. They acknowledged here how Jesus was casting demons out of people. And so since they could not deny his miraculous ability to do that, they then foolishly decided to question the source of his power. They said, yeah, he's doing this, but it's only by the power of Beelzebub. And so by casting demons out of people, Jesus was able to demonstrate his miraculous power that he was the Son of God and that he had power over these workers of Satan. And this brings us to our last point that we need to bring out about demons, and that is while Jesus and the apostles cast them out in the first century, demon possession does not take place today. It does not occur today. In the Old Testament, in the time of the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah makes mention of this in Zechariah chapter 13 in verse number 1. In Zechariah chapter 13 in verse 1, the prophet Zechariah said these words. He says, In that day a fountain will be opened for the house of David and for the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and impurity. It will come about in that day, declares the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land, And they will no longer be remembered, and I will also remove the prophets and the unclean spirit from the land. Notice how Zechariah mentions in that day, in that day. The in that day that Zechariah is talking about there is a reference to the time of the new covenant. The time of Jesus, the time of the Messiah. Zechariah says that during the time of the Messiah, during the time of his covenant, God would remove the evil spirits from the land. When you put this with what the Apostle Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians 13, there Paul says that when the perfect came, that is when the perfect revelation of God's word was given, the full complete Bible was finally accomplished, the miracles that were taking place in the first century would cease. They would no longer be needed among the people of God. That would also include demon possession and the ability to cast demons out of individuals. Zechariah and the Apostle Paul make it very clear that during the time of the New Covenant, during the time of the Messiah, when the scriptures were finally completed and revealed, demon possession would cease along with the ability to cast them out. And so these are four facts that I want you to remember about demons. Keep these things in the forefront of your mind because unfortunately there's a lot of false teaching about demons taking place today. Thanks for watching. For more online Bible study material or to find more episodes in this series, visit us on our website at montavista.church.